towards the uh, the end of uh, of 2014, Forrester uh, did a uh, put out something, and they said uh, that about the way in which everyone is embracing uh, mobile today. And and the quote is, because people carry their mobile devices with them at all times, mobile moments. So specifically, the points in time and space when someone pulls out a mobile device to get what they want in their immediate context, those mobile moments are the front line of the customer experience. That's why every consumer experience improvement effort, starting now, must include mobile. I think it's a great quote. Uh, indeed, for companies today to be successful, they need an engagement strategy that is truly mobile-centric. Uh, the expectation to effectively reach today's very much mobile-first customer requires that brands and enterprises have a strategy that provides that customized content, delivers personalized information to the individual consumer, and enables real-time delivery to any device. As you look at this slide, you know, there's a lot of data on the slide, but consistently, the one that stands out to me more than anything uh, is that adults spend an average of 141 minutes a day using their mobile device. Uh, that's an astounding figure, and it's clearly one of the things when I stand back and think, I, I don't have that kind of time to spare on a daily basis, but clearly I do. And I, this totally reinforces the point that to reach me as a consumer, we really do have to have that customized content delivered in a personalized way uh, and done so in real-time delivery methods to any device. That's mobile engagement, and that's what we're going to cover today. The, when I talk to uh, marketers today, um, you know, it's very much about remaining competitive. Uh, today's businesses must offer enhanced mobile engagement for customers who expect access to their favorite brands anytime, anywhere. And done right, mobile engagement can lay the foundation for a seamless, very much cross-channel communication strategy that it can help a company in any industry realize enhanced business benefits. So things like including optimizing your customer acquisition, enhancing customer loyalty, increasing revenue, reducing cost, as well as building and protecting your brand. We're going to be coming back to those kinds of statements. Those are the objectives, right? Clearly to achieve, to achieve those objectives, it's all about the execution. And the execution is, is the difficult part. Uh, many struggling, many companies are struggling with uh, how to fully integrate mobile. And uh, many CMOs or marketing, marketers that I speak with on a regular basis are relying purely on a mobile optimized website perhaps or uh, a branded app to deliver mobile services to their customers. This is a challenge. Uh, you know, I, I certainly don't open more than one or two or maybe three apps a day. There, there's a gap, right? The problem is that Neither of those two elements, a mobile optimized website or say a branded app, uh, in isolation truly deliver a satisfying customer experience. 50% or plus of your customer base may have, might have downloaded an app, but then what? Are they using it regularly? Is it helping to drive additional revenues? Where is it taking them? So this is what we're going to, to get into today. So I'm, I'm very proud to uh, have our, our incredible uh, expert uh, panelists on today's call today with us, uh, and we're going to cover what mobile engagement really is and share some insights into how you can overcome the barriers to entry uh, and talk about how you can get uh, started to implement a mobile engagement strategy that will not just uh, help you see immediate improvements in customer loyalty, but also set you up for that long-term success as mobile continues to completely permeate our, permeate our lives. So I, I will tell you that I'm, I'm thrilled to have Peggy Ann Saltz on here, and, and I've noticed that clearly her picture is not rendering, at least on my screen. So she, she is there, and, and, uh, and we will ensure that, you know, you do see a picture of her in, in the subsequent uh, version of this. However, I'm just delighted to have Peggy as a part of our, our activity and, and, and our webinar today. And uh, she's recently been named uh, Top 30 Mobile Marketing Influencer by Impact Radius. She's also the, the chief analyst and founder of Mobile Group, which is a research and consulting firm, as well as a, a frequent contributor to Forbes and Gigon Research uh, as a mobile analyst, and in which her focus is customer engagement and experience. 
Our most recent report, Managing the Complete Customer Experience, Encouraging Engagement with Mobile and Apps, helps businesses understand and harness mobile to reimagine the customer experience and supercharge sales and service channels. So she's currently working on a new GigOM research report, which we're excited to hear about, that examines how companies across all vertical markets can perfect approaches that delight the customer by interacting on the channels that consumers prefer and the sequence they appreciate. Very much the topics we're going to discuss today. Uh, next up, we have Cineverse's Vice President of Product Management, Todd Thayer. Todd joined Cineverse just last year with more than 20 years of experience in managing product strategy and development for uh, top mobile and technology companies and works very closely with uh, Cineverse's more than 550 enterprise customers around the globe. As head of product management for our enterprise and intelligent solutions division, Todd's focus is very much about delivering highly specialized mobile engagement solutions that enable brands to better engage their mobile customers around the world. And finally, we have Rob Hammond, who is our Senior Director of Enterprise Mobility Services, and he's been in the industry for about 30 years and is a very experienced business leader with a passion for turning this technology into revenue for our customers and is very much about uh, one of our, our leading commenters on uh, commentators on mobile engagement and uh, is frequently seen on our blog uh, as well as a contributor in the media on the, uh, the growing influence of mobile and business strategies today. So with that, uh, let's dive into this. So I'm going to move forward here and, and start interacting with our panels. And, uh, you know, as we mentioned, feel free to uh, submit questions uh, via either uh, Twitter or the, uh, the panel on your screen. Um, so, Peggy, we've heard a lot of hype about mobile engagement, but really, what is it, and why do marketers need to have, have it on their radar right now? Well, first of all, Mary, thanks for having me. It's a great topic and very timely because you were talking about it being uh, the year of uh, mobile engagement, that that's top of the agenda, and I would say that it is definitely there. In fact, um, the, your consumers, your customers have been there already. Uh, so it's about time to sort of join the party in, in, my, in my view because uh, it has to do with customer and consumer relationships, you know, and their behavior. They're accustomed to uh, smartphones, instant access to what they need, when they want it, how they want it. Um, in fact, they even demand uh, information that is relevant to their context, that is in that is attuned to what they're doing at that point, so wherever they are in the journey, and it's not just the, the uh, path to purchase, I'm calling it the path to action. It impacts uh, every vertical. Uh, we hear a lot about retail, of course, but there are lots of examples where you need to be engaging with your customer, whether you're in the travel and hospitality uh, verticals, um, really no vertical is left out because engagement is baked into everything. It's all about the mobile experience. I like to call it, um, in how I'm describing it, I like to say that what's happened is that your customer, their new default state is connected. And so therefore, it's a given that they're using their mobile as what uh, is often referred to as the remote control of their lives. And using that to interact with companies the way they want to, on the channels they want to, they are in the, they are in the driver's seat, they are making these decisions, and uh, it's no longer a question of mobile being a channel. I'm calling it, you know, a state of, a de facto state, a default state of being. And uh, in the report I wrote, the ebook rather, on behalf of the Mobile Marketing Association, um, which you also see in the screen here, um, you know, that was the whole idea. Mobile is, is rising up the ranks. It is bridging the digital and physical worlds. And understanding how to harness mobile in its new role is how you boost your marketing effectiveness. So things are starting out maybe on the mobile phone, maybe in a mobile app, very, very often in text messaging, being the most personal channel here. But to get away from channels, what's happening is it is activating um, actions, it's, it's triggering real world actions and real world results. And so therefore, um, if we're going to understand mobile now and engagement, it's understanding the role of mobile in a much larger, more comprehensive strategy aimed at engagement. Yeah, I think, I, I love the idea that it's not a channel. I, I think um, from my point of view right now, I, I 
I think the, that is the key component to being able to think about the way in which we were thinking about the way in which to approach mobile. And, and really, it, we just have to take the covers off of that. Rob, I, I'd love to get your, your take on that. Yeah, I, I can't agree more with what Peggy's point is. You know, mobile really isn't a channel. It's interesting when we talk to, you know, enterprises and I have an opportunity to talk, you know, globally uh, with companies, and so often we see the organizations aligned with a digital group. And, and when you really get down to it, it's really not about digital or about a particular channel. It's about mobile. Customers don't purchase through a channel. Customers don't actually interact with companies in digital. Digital is a technology. And by thinking about that technology, we blind ourselves to the opportunities that we see in interacting with customers. We need to kind of pull that away and understand that, you know, consumers interact and connect via mobile. And mobile changes everything. You know, here in the chart, we're talking about a number of transactional experiences where we could significantly improve that customer's experience to deliver that richest possible opportunity for interaction. But there's also promotional opportunities as well as loyalty and customer service. You know, as mentioned earlier by Mary, you know, 141 minutes a day, over two hours, you know, it's the only screen that's growing in viewership and, and minutes of use per day that, that we have out there. So I think as we see businesses kind of embrace that, we're seeing a, a much greater growth and interest um, in the opportunities to leverage the, the technology that we have in front of us with mobile. So this is a journey, as you've said, in, in uh, previously, Peggy. So I want to come back to, to this. So how do we define mobile engagement now? If, if I'm sitting in, in a chair listening to this webinar and I'm trying to wrap my head around this, how would I define, uh, what, what, is it, what does this evolution in this journey look like? Well, this is the interesting part because the journey, you know, some people want to see it as a circle. Um, I've seen other ways of looking at it. I see it as not just being a journey, I see it as being integrated into our daily routine. So, um, you know, whatever we're doing, it could be we're proactively pulling information. We're doing a mobile search and we're going to do something, you know, based on top of that. One of my favorite, favorite data points uh, is um, from XAD, for example, the mobile path to purchase. Again, it's not just about retail, it's about every vertical, but it was very interesting to read that, you know, mobile is often the start, the starting point of a larger journey. You know, it can be mobile search because you're using mobile search, as XAD tells us, um, nearly half of people use mobile search to, uh, you know, research their purchase, but also um, execute their purchase. So there's a lot going on there, but I really don't want to limit us only to this particular cycle. I want to think about it in a larger uh, way. And it's, um, it's in my research, what I'm looking at is more uh, the path to action rather than just to path to purchase. And there you're seeing that uh, text messages or, edge or, or, you know, interaction, it could be push notifications on an app, at sort of every step of a process. Um, not even just to say, you know, hi, how's it going? Uh, your delivery's ready, you can pick it up here sort of thing. But also in, for example, travel, uh, a message after a trip that they've helped book uh, saying, hey, how did you like it? Do you want to share it? So it gets to be a conversation. I want to make that point, the conversation is the engagement. It's that feeling that every step of the way, because this is all primarily digital nowadays. I mean, you know, we do go into physical locations. I'm not saying we don't, but this is a digital sort of exchange and there's a, a give and take of um, interaction, but also um, somehow the reinforcement and just that good feeling that there's, there's, a, there's a flow here and that I have a, uh, a party to interact with every step. I like that. The, um... It's digital give and take, right, this conversation yeah. that's occurring. I mean, I, I think that that's, I, I certainly feel that that's the way I'm interacting on a, a regular basis and feel the most uh, cared for, if you will. And so as, it, as, as we think about the, the way in which we're trying to uh, take this further into action, uh, Rob, maybe we can, I, I'd love to get your take on what we're referring to here is, our, our mobile engagement maturity model. How do we take this uh, this path to action, as, as Peggy's calling it, where really we're, we want to engage and start the conversation? If I'm if I'm trying to figure out how do I begin the conversation, I, I know maybe my end journey 
my end result is, is maybe a, a path to purchase, but I need to start the conversation now and begin that interaction now. Uh, I, I think this might be a, a, a good time to talk about that, that way to begin and, and how do you build that mobile engagement process. Absolutely, and, and Peggy, you know, Peggy, I don't think you could have um, worded it even better, um, any better than this, this idea that we have these interactions, these opportunities, these touch points that we have with customers, and yet there is a, a very almost dizzying set of technologies and capabilities that you have to be able to interact with folks. And how do we think about where we are today and where we're going into the future and map that journey that Peggy talked about earlier as mobile being a journey and how do we evolve our capabilities and pick the right tools for the right job. So for example, it may not be appropriate to send someone a text message that their, uh, that they, their shipment has been, you know, that they've ordered a lot, that they have an order that's been logged. But it very is very much important to be able to send a text message that says your package has been delivered. And so thinking about the particular type of message you have and the particular kind of business that you're in is extremely important in terms of how do we think about where we start and where we want to be in our journey. So as part of that, what we've done is the discussions that we've had with customers and, and thinking about how to bring this story together and as a planning tool, we brought out this mobile engagement maturity model. And when you look at the model, it, it's really built upon the idea that you're starting in a position and you want to aspire to some other place. And it's an opportunity to think about what that white space might be, but also plan and build projects around how to achieve and how to move forward. So if we take a little closer look at the model, on the x-axis of it, or the horizontal, you have business complexity and integration, so technical and business complexity. That's balanced on the other side with the options and the potentials that you have for how you may choose to interact with your customer, looking at the device as well as the application. And so when we think about that and we, we identify your current state, meaning where you are today and what you're doing, then you can look at where you may want to go next. So let's take a look at an example if you can for a second. So in this next example, can we just move the slide? There we go, perfect. There we go. So in this, in this example, what we have is we have someone who's new to mobile. And, and you could do this as a, an early adopter, uh, someone who's been in the business for a while, or, or somebody that's brand new to, to mobile. In this case, think of this as it's, you know, brand X. They're new to mobile, and this customer is just getting started, and they've been doing email, and they've been sending out newsletters, and they've got a pretty decent database from that. But not surprisingly, they've been asking customers for their home and work numbers for years. And that database is probably a little bit stale, and we really don't know if it's a mobile number or not. So there's a lot of ambiguity in that space. So one thing they may want to think about doing would be cleansing the database and taking a look at where they are uh, in terms of a data quality perspective. But separate from that, this customer would probably want to start with some kind of a mobile-originated campaign, something where they can build a database and have an opportunity to get better numbers and have certainty that people are looking to engage with them build that from that information that they have that's topical and interesting to their users, but build the mobile campaign. Might suggest something like a scratch-off type of opportunity. Something that's exciting, it's fun, a gameware or gamification kind of an inter interaction. After that, in kind of looking at the next stage of activities, this might be a customer that looks at, hey, I need to add some additional capabilities, and I'm, I've been looking to kind of get people more interested in my app, and so I'm doing something where I'm gonna use text messaging as an avenue to bring people into my application. It's the critical question you have around an app, of course, is if people aren't using your app, how can you message with them? How can you interact with them? Or how do I connect with people when they're not using their computer and, and looking at email? Text messaging gives us that ubiquitous type of solution, the opportunity to connect with someone before they're using our app or when they're not using it as often and be able to have that rich conversation with them. By using text messages as a link, and using short URLs to be able to deliver the content for that customer and delivering the compelling kind of responsive design-based uh, website. The next part of the activity would be to take advantage of that API integration that they've already built for this rich email campaign program that they've been running. They've already got the back-end systems connected, but they're not working with it in terms of how are they taking advantage of that in mobile. So adding mobile as another channel or as another capability, particularly text messaging in this case, to be able to send that same rich content and context that they have from the interactions with the user. 
The third step in this process would be looking at how do they take advantage of the third party information to grow both the reach of their interaction, but also to enrich the content with uh, even greater context from other transactions and opportunities. So as you look at the model itself, you have this opportunity starting kind of at the red dot is the where did I begin with my current state today, moving to these milestone spots, and then each one of those arrows becomes itself a project that you can work toward. Uh, we've developed a mobile engagement um, maturity model guide that can help you with various other examples around how to kind of take advantage of this and be able to use it in your own business uh, along the way. And that's actually one of the things that will be shared with everybody uh, later on in the week after uh, the webinar today. So I, I think I wanted to pull up this next slide. Thank you, Rob, for that really great walkthrough of how do I get started. And one of the things that I, I like very much about what you said in the beginning of that is what am I doing? What's needed? What do I, uh, what is my business objective of this? And we're going to keep coming back to what are you trying to achieve and, and being able to map that process because I know many of you sitting here are thinking, I, I'd love to be able to do all of this, but I'm, I'm going to have to ultimately explain, you know, what is my return on investment on doing any of this? And so that's why I wanted to, to talk about this from a, a holistic point of view and, and the way in which it, it really can interact with uh, the individual and how to improve the, the effectiveness of that. So, Todd, maybe you can, you can talk a little bit about uh, how to create that, that very unified strategy. Sure, Mary. Um, one of the interesting points is that, look, every company is starting from a different place when they're starting to approach mobile. Now, we may have a number of companies that use SMS as an engagement platform. Well, some companies might be using it for one-time passwords. Some might be using it for promotionals like text-to-video or text-to-web. Um, chances are um, your company was probably an early adopter, maybe in the email space or the SMS space or possibly even in push messaging today. Um, chances are, though, you might have two or three or four different vendors that are providing all those solutions for you. Now you start to get to a situation where you're looking to expand your mobile engagement with your customers. Um, whether you might be offer, or adding in-app offers, you might be doing things around beacons and geofencing. Um, or again, you might be doing some type of in-app push messaging. Um, one of the things that you probably want to be looking for are the ability to, to work with vendors that can expand as your mobile engagement needs expand. So just one of the things you may run into is as you're trying to manage multiple vendors, multiple platforms, multiple interfaces, the responsibilities within the organization around training, around security, around testing get pretty daunting pretty fast. So again, I think one of the things that we would suggest to you is make sure when you're looking for vendors to help you grow, make sure that they can grow in this cross-channel world so that you don't have to turn around and find a new vendor every time you want to expand your engagement. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, and I think this is one of the biggest challenges about making this effective. I, I think, uh, Peggy, your, your thoughts on, you know, how this can how this can work, you know, needing to backtrack to, to kind of move forward. What are your, what are your thoughts on, uh, on this approach here? Well, I get very excited about the opportunity here. I know it looks daunting at first, and there are times when I'm speaking with marketers, and they're like, well, this, you know, this is all great, but uh, everyone's talking about beacons. How do I get there from here? And I'm like, um, worry about that later, because uh, it's about your customer. So it's about that journey, and you have to figure out where your customer is in that journey and what your objective is. Where do you want to take them? And for me, the good news here is that we already have a lot at our disposal. We have a lot of technologies, a lot of formats at our, you know, at our fingertips right now. Um, MMS is having a comeback. SMS uh, is, is very central. Um, In-app communications, um, even email, you know, we're reading most of our email on our mobile device. That tells you, first of all, mobilize and optimize, you know, optimize your email for a mobile device, but it's also saying, hey, that belongs in the mix. So I'm excited about the breadth of this mix and, uh, what I think is important is, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. Don't try something entirely new. Use what you have and think differently about it. You know, think about where you, where you want to take your customer on the journey and keep in mind that context 
is extremely important. And there are other ways of getting context into this rather than sort of the creepy uh, discussion we have. You know, there are ways to deliver value. <laughs> I know we have to talk about the creepy discussion, but. Yeah, totally. um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but then you look at the you know you look at the research and you look at the numbers and you see it over and over again that millennials in particular, but you know they everyone uh, across the board says give me value I'll give you some data for it. So that what does that tell us? It tells us to give something contextually relevant and important, whether that's a deal they're interested in, or um, in some cases millennials just want to know about uh, you know some sort of trend-setting thing before all their other friends. I mean this is value and this is the way you can make this a conversation, but also I think a very um, uh, important uh, trade, you know, an exchange that will be ongoing because that's the other question, you know, and that was a big thing at NRF recently uh, where the head of Levi's stood up and said, you know, okay, we had you as a customer, now we're focusing on how to get you back because it's not just about that one-off, it's about that continual engagement. It is because it isn't as if we just disappear, right? We we really do have an obligation as a as a business to constantly figure out how to make it so that customer wants to continue to deal with us. It's building that continual conversation mm -hmm. over a long period of time. I I wanted to bring up the example that you had you had referenced to us. I I think that that's really compelling. I've gone ahead yeah, and I'm pulled that up on the on the screen here. Go for it. That's great, because this is what I'm really excited about. When I say you don't need to reinvent the wheel, you know, I mean it. These are the sensors in our phones right now, okay, and, and planned. But I'm talking to a lot of brands, a lot of marketers, and doing my research and doing my books, and, you know, saying, well, what are you doing? And they're actually telling me what we're doing is we're going back a little bit. We're looking at what we've done so far, and we're saying, okay, we nailed context in the sense that we sort of have you know, right time, right place, although that's also evolving. So we've nailed context, but let's go in deeper because that's where the value is, layering something on top of this. And uh, so I'm not only hearing about multi-channel approaches, which are extremely important, I'm hearing about multi-layer approaches. And what I mean here is, for example, um, uh, one brand saying, okay, we can do a lot with, because the brand is relevant to this particular um, Sensor, it's about temperature, it's about heat. So it's understanding not only location and context from the personal profile and whatever other exchanges there might have been and also the data in the database, but also the temperature at that point in time at that place. Um, and using that as a trigger to say, hey, here's a text message, we're gonna deliver you, you know, it's a certain temperature, would you appreciate a certain product? In this case, anti-deodorant or ice cream. Um, I was just, Literally, before this webinar, an entirely new company uh, example came to my attention, very interesting that I'm fascinated with, and that's with um, the magnetic field, because every phone has a compass, and I'm talking to a brand that says, you know, we can use that, that magnetic field information to be more accurate than uh, most location information to deliver something not only at shelf level, but literally, you know, three meters, um, or less, uh, rather one meter or less at that level. So again, hyper, hyper location. All of this possible because you're using what you have differently. It, it does get back to that, what the opportunities really are. There's so many different ways to, mm -hmm. to go after this, to evolve this. And so I like the idea of, okay, if I started here, let's say I'm, I've been in this for a little while, I've had some uh, forays into this, I've experimented a little bit, but now as we're walking through and we're talking about all of the different options and as you, as you describe them, the different layers, um, Rob, we, we've been talking all about these different ways of pursuing and engaging through these different channels. What are we talking about here? What, what are really the differences between the mobile channels? Yeah, I think this is, this is really the crux of the conversation. This is the opportunity for us to get real. If you think about the mobile engagement maturity model that we were describing earlier, it's about the strategy and about how do I take the enterprise forward and think about where we are today and where do we want to go. But let's get real around what are the things that we can do that most consumers haven't even really experienced yet. The opportunities to engage and delight those people, our customers, and give them these rich customer experiences. And there's lots of options that are out there that are quite simple and, and direct to be able to implement it. You know, I use my own personal lab, which are my, my kids that are millennials, and you know, I always ask the question, creepy or cool? What do you guys think, right? Whenever we bring home an idea and, and show them something. And you know, the opportunity to leverage the web 
and be able to use SMS as a link to get you to the web to provide those rich, responsive design type experiences, the flip books even, you know, or be able to use MMS and be able to take one click less out of the interaction, or be able to take this opportunity of looking cross-channel and delivering a message at the right time based upon the customer's preferences and the context with the right message delivery really hits people at a point of saying, it's easy for me. And in the end, consumers generally want things that are simple and easy. The harder it is, the less likely they are that they're going to identify with it, which will certainly reduce your take rates and will certainly impact your opportunity to delight your customers. But more than that, we have the app itself and the native application. If, if I have the opportunity to interact with that brand, or if I'm a brand and I want to interact with my consumers, and I can get them to use my app, that's the richest experience. It's the, it's the opportunity that I have to really connect with that user and keep them in my world, in my garden, as it were. It's not a walled garden, granted, but it is certainly a more defined space where I can have the kind of conversations with the user and deliver them experiences and know who they are that is the richest, most possible, uh, richest possible engagement that's available. But there's tremendous challenges around how do we think about apps. You know, the penetration rates and the usage and the app, the waning interest in apps, it's a, it's a difficult space. You know, if I think about my own phone or my kids' phones and the number of apps that are implemented or downloaded on there, and then the pages they are further and they're buried in folders, it's a challenging environment. And there are not a lot of brands that are going to have the share of mind to be able to have that user interact with them on a regular and recurrent basis. So it's more than just, I'm going to have an app strategy. If I need to have an, a solution strategy, I need to have a mobile engagement strategy around how I leverage many of these different options. SMS fits in a space that gives us a great opportunity to connect with people and bring people back into the discussion that maybe they've waned in usage of the app. The app clearly gives us the richest possible experience that's available. But then there's things like light applications, um, Apple Passbook, that are a tremendous opportunity for us to participate in the app ecosystem without having to have the overhead and the challenges of having the apps themselves. You know, we've been working with a number of different brands, and one brand did a text-to-web campaign, and for every $7,000 they spend, they're getting a return of around $65,000, 50 to 60,000. That's a 600% return. You know, another organization that we've, uh, that we've seen has done app downloads and increased those app downloads by 20% by leveraging SMS and being able to do um, an email opt-in. You know, you have hundreds of enterprises that are taking advantage of shortened URLs, bit.lys, as, they, as you may be familiar with them. And customer, gets, customer satisfaction rates, you know, when you use a game, soar. We're seeing 80% type numbers out of customers that are looking at those kinds of interactions and being delighted by what we're doing. And then there's some companies that have done some work with geofences and with being able to do offers that are based upon the handset-based location information, tied with preferences either preferences that are explicitly provided by the customer or perhaps preferences that are captured from a propensity model from usage. And in a banking percent, or a particular bank, we saw 65% of customers that were interested in receiving marketing offers that were tailored to them by a location. And finally, just the number of opportunities to take advantage of third-party data and create a marketplace, an opportunity where you bring offers to customers that match their preferences and their desires and take advantage of that context, as Peggy was talking about, whether it be a sensor or a, a micro-location function or something that you just happen to know because they're in your CRM system and you've integrated with an API to your platform and you're able to provide that context of the point of sale information. In the end, the cross-channel opportunities to interact with users across the different modalities and at the same time deliver in these experiences is what customers are expecting. On the cool side, as opposed to the creepy side. <laughs> so I'm going to zero in on something because, of course, one of the statistics that is always, uh, I think, very critical for anyone that is sitting here starting to figure out what am I going to do, how am I entering into this, texting works on 95% of the mobile devices that are out there in the world today. Peggy, we found, uh, you know, this particular uh, statistic very interesting, this sort of text versus voice. I wanted to get your take on this and see 
what your thoughts were related to. How is, how is this fitting into the, the channel from your point of view? Well, actually, I used this in uh, one of the papers I wrote about um, engagement and apps because uh, uh, I've, I've written two books on apps, and they were sort of getting a bit of a, um, at, the, at the time, sort of little apps, um, you know, that's something very different, that's something very revolutionary. Why would we want to go and use text now that we have apps? And it was really very much about the, um, first of all, the human touch here is that many people um, look at these text messages they're getting as if they're having actual real conversations with people on the phone. I mean, I was in focus groups where people thought that, you know, they're getting personalized sort of uh, uh, alerts around uh, new content from a publisher, and they really thought there's like a room of people somewhere, uh, you know, typing back there and knowing their, <laughs> their background and really and really saying this out. I mean, this is a millennial group, sure. but we're whatever. Um, <laughs> and it's just that really amazingly personal touch, and I thought, well, yes, because it's it's, it's meaningful, it's personal, and if you've done your homework right, it's contextually relevant, so you are really getting it at the moment you need it the most. And I think that that is um, something that we can't uh, forget in going forward is that, uh, you know, businesses, it's the whole idea that your customers expect you to be mobile as they are. So they have a certain expectation. So you need to be sort of on demand for them we didn't even get to customer service, which I will in a moment, where this is hugely important. But also, um, the other way around is that they want to have um, access to you that seems to be as if there's, uh, there's, you know, there's communications based on their demand as well. So they're demanding it their way, and, and this is a way that they also accept. And if we um, jump ahead to um, the next slide, you know, these are some of the reasons I have this from Portia Research. Just a really nice list that I love to quote when I'm uh, in, in uh, you know, in doing a speaking engagement or in, in any of my research, because these are the reasons why SMS will always have its place at the table. And this came out, my report came out right around the time that was, oh, you know, text is, uh, what, was 25 years old, and some naysayers saying, oh, everyone is, you moved on, but actually no. And in fact, I was showing how you can use text to re-engage your audience for an app, coming back to the app. So you have app developers, companies with apps saying, you know, how do I get people to use it? And um, also, very important, when they have deleted the app, how do you re-engage with them? Because if you have push notifications, that's great, but they have to have the app and they have to maybe have it open on the device. But push, uh, push doesn't go to reactivating or re-engaging at that level, saying, hey, you know, I realize you deleted my app, but hey, I've got some new features, let's give it another try. Again, that conversation, why? Because SMS works, because it's quick, because it's cheap, because it's acceptable because it's also discreet, but I would say adding to this, it's just extremely effective to engage with customers um, even though they may have um, forgotten you. It's just a friendly nudge I see in this, in this framework. Yeah, I think it's, it's certainly one of the ways that I love to use and interact with the, the way in which I use an app. I expect it to be fully integrated. So, as we think about how our participants get started today, uh, Todd, what I would really love for you to jump in here on is what are the best practice tips for implementing a mobile engagement strategy? How would you get started with this? Yeah, so let's, let's be completely honest. Many companies are really struggling how you get started. Now, one of the interesting pieces of it is that we now have cloud-based service uh, solutions um, that allow us to do these very quick deployments. So, it's not like it was in the old days where you would come in and do these massive integrations into someone's back-end CRM. With some of the cloud-based services, you're able to get up and running extremely quickly. Now, I can tell you that a number of companies are out there experimenting. They want to know what's possible. Um, and to be perfectly honest, um, they don't know exactly where they want to go. And if your goal is to be perfect when you're trying to do these services, you have the wrong goal. This is all about trying to um, creative vision. So one of the things that we have with the mobile engagement maturity model is it helps you to start looking at, okay, what could that vision be for my company? The second part of it is let's, um, you're going to want to work with a partner to figure out a realistic deployment strategy. And that's going to be a series of testing, of investigation, of reaction, of discovery. You really need to start experimenting with your customers. So the longer you wait, 
the harder this is going to be. Now, again, to get started in the industry, it doesn't require millions of dollars and a massive IT effort. Again, with the cloud-based solutions that are being offered today, you really can take a database of numbers, you, you can drop those into a cloud-based tool, you can start sending messages out to a segmented group of your, of your population, and you can really get these systems up and running extremely quickly. Now, again, it's not about trying to be perfect. It's not about trying to, to get where you're trying to go overnight. There is a series of learning, training, all the different pieces that need to be part of your solution. The nice thing about it, though, today is that the companies are setting themselves up to be that vendor for you that allows you to work together to get to the mobile engagement level that you're, you're seeking. I think it's so important to, to really reinforce that issue that it, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? I think that's, that's so much of where we, we really face a, a challenge. One, one of the things we liked so much um, in, uh, in our discussions, and Peggy, I'm just going to hand it over to you. I pulled it up on, on, the, uh, on the screen here, is the, the three C's of mobile engagement, a place where you can start to think about uh, your, your approach and your strategy as, as you consider how to, how to go forward in mobile engagement. Go for it. Absolutely. I mean, this goes back to the report I'm working on right now for Giga, which is looking at how companies, how brands need to understand the interplay between the medium and the message here. You know, the point is that companies, brands can leverage technology to meet this requirement, which I'm calling, you know, the path to action, choosing the right communications channels. That's extremely important because you need to understand sort of the, the, the sequence here. And what I'm saying is that, you know, we're looking at, um, the whole idea is basically, in a nutshell, communications cannot be a guessing game, and it should support what I call the three C's, the scenarios, the day in the life or actual client um, interactions that are, you know, to understand these is a key ingredient in effective communication. So I'm calling it context, which I think is obvious. You know, that's that context you can pick up from, uh, you know, a number of ways, uh, either inferred or, or uh, indicated by the user to you directly. Continuity, really important. This is the whole idea about before when I was saying, you know, it is about the, the, the typical vertical such as uh, retail, but it's everything else because it's, it's um, you know, mapping your your channels, whether it's messaging, in-app, app, mobile website, I mean, it goes on and on, mapping that to, for example, um, a delivery flow or customer self-service, that requirement they have for, you know, for you showing that, that you care or that you're being professional. And of course, um, you know, the convenience of having um, communication, rather continuity, uh, that removes the friction in that interaction. And communications just being absolutely at the core, being, you know, where you can uh, define your differentiation um, or um, show and demonstrate the, the customer benefits because you are actually um, engaged with your user and you have chosen appropriate channels. So the context, continuity, communications, and yep. two more. Rob, you've added <laughs> yeah, two I would more. Add, yeah, I would add two more C's to, to Peggy's great list there. I'd add cloud and credible. You know, having a credible provider that can help you navigate some of the complexities of the marketplace is certainly a, a tremendous help. And, and then being a, and delivering these solutions in a cloud really helps to alleviate or at least minimize your business and your technology risk. So we've had a lot of questions come in, and uh, one of the ones that uh, I wanted to, to highlight that uh, I think is really relevant for our discussion, and do remember I've got here on the screen uh, using the, uh, the hashtag ME101, and uh, as well as a, a Q&A on the, the WebEx. This question I, I think is, is exactly in, in the sweet spot of our conversation. Uh, we created an iPhone app at the request of our CMO, I'm a CMO, I, I hope I don't do this, um, but I don't know how to get people to use it. We want to send push notifications through it, but with no users, and we're not seeing the ROI we want. Peggy, you want to take a shot at that, and we'll see see what your thoughts are and, and, and see if the guys have uh, anything else to add to it. Go for it. Well, I would start off, but I'm also telling a lot of app developers as well when they're saying, yeah, we got an app and there's 1,600 apps coming out daily, so what are we going to do? People download it, they don't use it. And I say, well, again, go, go back another step. You know, you have to um, 
tell people or make it clear what the value is of, of using the app. And you would be amazed at the results of using text and even email to help market your app in the sense that someone's downloaded the app but getting them to actually use it. And sometimes, sometimes really the gap is just understanding how to use it and, and when to use it and really understanding the advantages of an app because, you know, with a couple of screenshots or a, or a quick sort of download our app here from a, from a brand or retailer, um, you know, doesn't tell enough of the story. And so I would say go back and think it through through other channels to reinforce your message. Todd, Rob, anything you want to add? Yeah, I would put out um, a couple of things. One is that's actually one of the use cases that's def that we've shared in the mobile engagement maturity model guide. So uh, hopefully folks will get a chance to take a look at that one and, and see how to take advantage of that. But Peggy's spot on, I think, as well. And, and we've actually had some experience where we've used text to drive app downloads as well. So both as a notification function, but also in terms of encouraging people, um, particularly if you can do it within context, of encouraging a download of the app. Yeah, you know, I think the, the other part of that is whoever sent in that message, uh, you're not alone. Um, most of the customers that come to us are, have done the exact same thing that you've done. They've made these investments, they've hired resources, um, they've put a lot into their apps and they're not getting the uptake that they're looking for. Now, again, you can mix that with, you know, maybe you're sending text, when a new feature comes up on your app, maybe you're sending that out via a text message. Maybe you're now integrating in other third-party capabilities. So it's really interesting that your app can do what you want it to do, but maybe you expand that capability in your app, app by offering maybe third-party mobile offers or other third-party services that enhance that application. And then being able to drive people back to that app um, via email, via text message, allows you to, to increase that uptake. That's great. I, I... I think we're, we're helping to reinforce the messages that we've given so far. A question came in that I think kind of uh, is reflective of the noise that's out there associated with mobile engagement and, uh, and, and really I think reflects uh, some of the confusion. Uh, the question is where does social media fit into a mobile engagement strategy? I, I think it's a, a great question. Um, Peggy, you, you want to start us off? You know, it's that it's also going back to that discussion. Um, does social negate mobile, or mobile negate social in your spending? Mm -hmm. I remember there was a discussion among marketers. It was like, well, I'm spending on social media, so I don't just spend on mobile. Or am I spending on mobile? What do I do about social right. media? I mean, if you think about what we do on mobile and what we're doing even in mobile apps, I mean, number one is we are checking in with our social networks. We are being social. We are sharing. Um, I, I, I'm hoping someday that the the blur, you know, the line is blurring between them anyway, and I'm hoping very much that that continues because it is a conversation, as we've been saying, and that conversation um, is is social in nature. So I don't see that, mm -hmm. that there's anything different. Where I, What I would say and what I miss a lot in campaigns I've looked at, also apps I've looked at, and I remind people, you know, you have to um, really make certain that you can integrate this into your experience. I mean, it's something as simple as a share button or it's uh, in shopping, you know, social is so key to shopping. Um, and, and we're seeing that so much now with uh, apps that will allow you to say, you know, how do I look in this and what do you think? And, um, you know, it's, it has to be part of the experience and you have to make it easy for those of us who want to share to share. I think that's the number one sort of easiest first step because you would be amazed how many um, apps and interactions and, and just overall campaigns don't let you share. I mean, you're, you're, you're experiencing a great brand campaign from a brand you love and you can't tell your friends about it because they haven't baked it in. That's, that's a shame. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really continuing the conversation, right? It's, it's it just thinking about yeah. this is another way to communicate and another way to have that conversation. We've had another question come in that kind of really, uh, it, I think, uh, resonates with what you were just saying. The question is, what trends, uh, what are the trends of using tools like WhatsApp and Snapchat uh, and integrating them to the mobile customer engagement process? Uh, anybody want to take a shot at that, Peggy, if you want to start, or, or Robert Todd? Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with that one, Mary. Um, you know, one of the things we're seeing is that the, the cost of engagement around the world varies greatly. 
Um, so we're starting to see the uptake in certain markets, take WeChat or Line. Some customers are looking to do, say, two-way SMS chat capabilities. And instead of maybe creating some of their own applications or pieces, they want to do that integration over an existing social network. And in many cases in different parts of the world, that's actually a cheaper alternative than creating their own branded solution and then trying to push it out to their, uh, to their customers. And I think the other thing to think about as you're um, looking at those is the, the amount of time that any one of these particular social networks is available, uh, meaning that particularly if you look at the millennials, you know, we've moved past Twitter to Snapchat, past that Snapchat mm -hmm. to Instagram, et cetera. So if you're an enterprise and you're trying to build a long-term engagement with your customers and you think about the limited IT resources and, and functions that are available, it can be a very significant challenge for an enterprise or a brand on their own to do those kinds of integrations. And it might be a place where they need to partner along the way to uh, be able to get the scale and the pace of change that's going to be necessary to support those as our fickle consumer base you know, moves rapidly from one solution to the next. The switching costs just aren't very high uh, as the, the consumer public moves from you know, one tool set to another. I would add that that cycle is probably also going to shorten, by the way, because the other thing is to look at where your customers are. And I was uh, dealing with a, uh, a brand in, in Pet Foods, and there are social networks just for cat and dog lovers only. I mean, they are diehard cat and dog <laughs> lovers. Um, yeah. But if you don't have that integrated into what you're doing, then what are you doing, really? I mean, uh, you know, Twitter, LinkedIn isn't going to cut it, and uh, there are going to probably be as many social networks going forward as there are apps at some point. I mean, I won't, I won't say maybe that avalanche, but it's going to evolve, and you need to be able to evolve with that. And totally. I think I'm, I'm so excited about this. I'm, I'm going to wrap up our Q&A at this point, and I don't think we were able to get to all of the questions that have come in. So if you have any further questions on what we discussed today or would like to talk further, uh, please do send an email to info at Cineverse.com. This is something we monitor very carefully. We will get back to you. I've learned a great deal from this session, and I do hope that those of you that have, uh, have listened in have learned uh, a great deal as well, and I, as well, and I can't thank enough our, our panel of experts. Um, what I, I want to just just do a little recap of, of some of the things that, that we really, uh, I think, resonated today, which is it's all about the, the customer and creating that conversation. I'm, I'm going to keep coming back to that, right? The, it's not a path to purchase. It's, it, it's every step towards the interaction and creating that digital give and take. Um, but once we know that that's what we want to achieve, What's the path to get there? And I, I think one of the consistent messages that we've heard today is that no matter what, it needs to be an integrated, holistic approach. So as you consider all the ways that you're interacting with your customer today and the way in which you've interacted with them in the past, all can lead towards what's really the best and most effective strategy to achieve that objective, right? So it's integrated, but it's asking that question, what am I trying to achieve? What needs to be the, the, achieve, you know, the objective that's primary that needs to be achieved? And what is the path that I can take to do here? I, I loved one of the things Todd said, which is it doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, as, as a business owner, one of the biggest challenges that I think we all have is being able to build the business case on the strategy that we want to employ versus the strategy that we may be forced to employ, right? What do I have at my fingertips? One of the consistent issues that I think folks face today is I have an, an enormous amount of data that is at varying levels of, uh, of dated, whether it is old information or newer information about my customers. How do I take that and reasonably turn it around and leverage it into a multi-channel uh, path to the conversation? And so I think as we heard utilizing uh, cloud technology providers, figuring out a way to potentially experiment with segmented groups of your customers and looking to leverage the assets that you may have already invested in, such as an application, such as email, and utilize uh, things as in-app texting and going down those incremental steps in every circumstance you are learning more, 
building more information about the context and relevance for that consumer. What's important to them? What do they need and want? So that you have the best opportunity really to justify the longer term return on investment because it isn't, it isn't mobile as a channel anymore. It, it is, it, it's, uh, somebody said to me recently, we should just stop calling it mobile. Well, we don't know what else to call it right now, but it is very much, you know, the, the opportunity to interact with something that is so completely permeated within our lives. And having that human touch and having it be meaningful and contextual uh, helps us as, as business providers and service providers looking to engage consumers uh, it, it's helping us meet their expectations to be as, uh, as relevant and as mobile as they are. So once again, I want to thank our panelists, Peggy, Todd, Rob, and, uh, and thank you to everyone who listened in today. I hope you found the session useful and uh, you've got some best practices to take back to your businesses. Uh, as I mentioned at the start, we've been recording this session. So look for an email from me uh, later this week with that recording as well as a link to the slides and a, a copy of the newest guide that provides more information on our mobile engagement maturity model. Uh, and we so thank you for your time and your participation today. And uh, we look forward to hosting another webinar in the future and we, uh, and we wish you well and good luck and success in your implementation of your mobile engagement strategies. Thank you.